Everyone, today we're announcing our next generation, the RTX Blackwell family. Of course, we're producing at very large scale availability starting January. GeForce, in a lot of ways, all of this with AI is the house that GeForce built. GeForce enabled AI to reach the masses. And now, AI is coming home to GeForce. Oh, I agree, Jensen. AI certainly has come home to GeForce in that GeForce is an afterthought for you. AI is home, which I can only imagine actually AI is where all that large scale production has gone with Blackwell because it certainly hasn't gone to gamers so far in quarter one. And yeah, the biggest bombshell that will be dropped in this video is indeed how apocalyptically bad the supply will be for the 5070 Ti, as you could probably tell when you clicked on that thumbnail. Hold on to your pants for that one. But, but before I get to that, I do feel the need to speak about the actual performance of the 5070 Ti that is launching this week. And it will be quick because ultimately the performance is mostly in line with what I was told to expect a couple of weeks ago, especially in terms of ray tracing performance, which just like I was told, did finally, for the first time for a Blackwell card so far, outpace the raster uplift. Although I guess I will also admit though that the raster performance increase for the 5070 Ti over the 4070 Ti Super was a bit higher than expected. And I was genuinely, just being honest, expecting a 5 to 12%, like upper single digits, maybe lower double digits uplift over the 4070 Ti Super and Raster. And some averages did find that, to be fair. But I have to admit, admit when I'm at least a bit wrong here, that it seems closer to an 11 to 16% uplift, which is yeah, above expectations. Although... It, look, it doesn't change the overall picture, in my opinion. Look, despite finally giving us that larger ray tracing uplift than raster uplift, gen over gen, there's still plenty of games where the 5070 Ti is only single digits faster than the 4070 Ti Super, and plenty of games where it doesn't even beat the 7900 XT, which is, of course, a 20 gigabyte card that for months was selling for $650. That would have been a much better purchase months ago, I believe, than waiting for this overpriced 16 gigabyte card. And so, because of that, I do still think it's quite plausible that RDNA 4 is going to bury this thing uh, for a lower price. And actually on that note, in the video you're seeing referenced on screen right now, recently I, I overlaid expected 5070Ti and RDNA 4 performance to come to some sort of conclusion about how competitive I expect RDNA 4 to be. But considering that the 5070Ti has turned out a tad faster than expected, I thought we should redo that page. And so, all right, here it is. As of this week, the average 4K gaming performance from Hardware Unbox review of the 5070Ti. Link is, of course, in the description. As you can see, the 5070Ti is close to a 4080 in performance, which I suspect some people might see that or saw that this week and went, oh, so that means it'll be the same performance as the 9070 XT. AMD is doomed. But actually, as I've already leaked multiple times, AMD isn't just targeting a 4080. Right now, their current performance goals are a bit above the 4080 and possibly in line with a 4080 Super. And so, yeah, when you see this chart, remember, when I overlay it here, that I still believe that the 9070 XT is likely to at least slightly edge out the 5070 Ti in raster. Although at this point, I kind of expect a slight ray tracing loss. Uh, and the 9070 is expected to trade blows with the 4070 Ti Super and 7900 XT as in raster. And so, yes, the 5070 Ti doesn't look like it will be consistently blown away in performance by the 9070 XT after seeing the reviews for it. But nonetheless, I still believe AMD has a ton of room to maneuver here with their cheaper to manufacture graphics cards that are about to launch. Remember, they are. RDNA 4 is cheaper to make than Blackwell. It uses GDDR6 instead of GDDR7. The board costs are more standard and less complex. They have cheaper and less crazy looking coolers most of the time, especially for comparing reference design to reference design. And I still suspect that the silicon cost will be a bit lower than what NVIDIA is working with as well, relatively speaking, although we'll have to see on that last bit. So either way, as long as they keep the same sort of margins that they had, that the RX 7000 series, you know, RDNA 3 had around its launch, I, I think AMD can have good margins and 
price these things below where their NVIDIA counterparts are. Heck, they could probably even have higher margins than last gen and price things pretty aggressively. And yes, it is my opinion that if they price the 9070 XT and 9070 respectively at $600 and $500, these are going to blow away the $750 and $550 5070 series. Although, might AMD go for higher prices than $600 and $500? Well, if they do... It's probably because of what the real price of the 5070 series is, which, yep, I'm about to leak to you. Both the average pricing AIVs have warned me the 5070 Ti will cost and the even worse availability for the 5070 series. It is truly some of the worst stuff I have ever heard. But first, an ad from a sponsor. All Jesse wants is for Maurice to play with her more often. But unfortunately, he just does not give out playtime or kisses for as low of a rate as she does. And I think she's just going to have to deal with that. But do you know what you don't have to deal with? Paying too much for Microsoft software if you go to cdkeyoffer.com. This piece of content is sponsored by cdkeyoffer.com. Whether it's Microsoft operating systems, Office products, or even many of the latest games, cdkeyoffer.com provides PC gamers with a product this community deserves amongst endlessly elevating component costs. Fair pricing on Microsoft keys is one thing that we at least should get, I think. And, you know, the Moore's Law is Dead team has been working with CDKeyOffer.com for a very long time. And that's because they're good to me, good to Dan, good to about a dozen family members of friends of mine that have used their services. And they've been really, really good, most importantly, to the Moore's Law is Dead team community so support this channel by using offer code broken silicon to save 25 percent off microsoft software or you can also use die shrink to save three percent off everything else on the website like games using either of those codes really helps the channel a ton and it helps save you money so use those codes broken silicon and die shrink at cdkeyoffer.com today all right, let's just get right into what my sources are telling me about 5070 Ti launch supply. The good news is that I've rarely had more consistent feedback than I just received this week for a launch situation. So I feel very confident in the information I'm about to present to you. But then, of course, that means the bad news is, is that I am very confident in very bad news. So let me just put this on screen here. The first source here, who works for a North American retailer, says that they finally got their first 5090 in store at their location this week. And that they got about a dozen 5080s for launch last month. Meanwhile, compared to those launches, which is to say basically zero and a, ha a couple handfuls, they will have less than 10 5070 Ti's for launch. So this is better than the 5090, but otherwise the second lowest volume GPU launch this person has seen in their lifetime. And yes, they are told they will get a lot more supply, especially for the 5080 in March, but this person's going to have to see it to believe it. All right, moving on to the second source here, who works for a major online retailer. They checked their system, asked around, and can confirm that they'll only have a bit over a few hundred 5070 Ti's for launch company wide. Now, I want to put this in perspective. This is a major retailer, like one of a few in North America that supplies, well, you've all shopped here. And let me just say that this person <laughs> checked what the total, total supply will be, and it's comparable, I would say, to the amount of 4090s that were at launch, mm, maybe at two to three micro centers. except this is for North America. This is technically closer to the 5090s launch, therefore, in supply than to the 5080s launch, oh, and this person tells me that while there are technically cards at MSRP, the average price is $950. And by that, I mean, like, yes, look, there's this one card over here that's like $749, but there's like two of them. And then if you average two times 750 with like 20 times 800 with like 200 times 1,000, the average price, at least for this online retailer of a 5070 Ti is $950.
Moving on to the third source here, this person was pretty frustrated and then just was like, well, look, what do you want me to say? It's a U.S. retailer. They said that supply will be like the 5080 at best and pricing is awful. In fact, this person is starting to become concerned about the RTX 5070. And the good news is that this person can confirm rumors that it is launching on March 5th. But the bad news is that they are still mostly in the dark about what to expect for supply. Like they know a launch date, but when they're like, okay, can I order a dozen, a hundred for my location? nothing nothing is being communicated here even though this thing is supposedly launching in two weeks and so this person says that they keep getting told by distributors that things will improve in quarter two but no one will say how much they will improve kind of sounds more like they're hoping that will happen based on what they've heard from nvidia then they know for sure that it will happen moving on to source number four here this person says after numerous talks with nvidia reps this week they and this is a major north american distributor that supplies all different types of stores and online retailer. This person says that they still can't get any firm guarantees on when they will get substantial restocks of GPU supply from NVIDIA. The only concrete numbers that they are quoted are five to 16 week lead time. So over a month to four months for most SKUs and only for a few dozen at a time. So just to repeat what that means, that means months of waiting once you order, say, a 5080, and you might only get like 40 of them in a few months. At least if it did come sooner, that would be nice, but that's all NVIDIA will promise. This person insisted to me that this really definitely is a worse launch cycle than even the RTX 3000 series. And so there you go. Indeed, it is consistently stated that supply for this is around RTX 3090 levels, which actually means a bit better than 5090, but still basically an entirely paper launch, meaning that if there is any demand for the 5070 Ti, and unfortunately, given the market's conditions right now, I do believe there will be demand for it even at $950 on average, they're going to sell out instantly. However, there is one ray of sunlight here, and that is, I have to admit, multiple sources have told me that they expect supply to drastically improve for the 5080 and lower, no one's confident about the 5090, but the 5080 and lower in quarter two, and because that coincides with around when the 5070 is launching and competition from AMD, I can't help but wonder if the 5070 will have good supply, like I've been speculating it could be. That would be NVIDIA's usual MO, but... I still wouldn't take that to mean it will have good AIV pricing. We'll have to wait to find out about that. Um, but at the same time, with the problem is that with how unreliable NVIDIA reps sound right now to my sources, I just can't be sure how much better, better will be in March, right? Like, if you tell me supply is going to improve in March, you could, like, you could double supply and that would still mean finally the 5090 is at 3090 launch levels and then the 5080 is still like half of what the 4080 had at launch even if you doubled that supply. And so that's why I don't want to really, and none of my sources do either, or feel confident doubling down on how much or how quickly supply for RTX 5000 series will improve because you could double supply and it would still feel like there's none of them around. Uh, and so either way though, I have no doubt that because of all of this, AMD really does have an opening here. Sorry, but in a world where the latest 70 Ti is averaging $950 with worse supply than Ampere, I can't help but think that even a $700 9070 XT would do pretty well in this current market, and a $600 or $500 one would regain a boatload of market share for Radeon that they desperately need. And I have to think that they're aware of that. But I don't know. We'll see. The ball is in your court, AMD. And I think you should price these things, the 9070, 9070 XT, aggressively. Although, unlike NVIDIA, please make sure that you are producing a very large scale. And that will do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure that you share it, that you like it, and that you comment down below for the algorithm. Also subscribe to Moore's Law is Dead, the YouTube channel. Half of you haven't, according to the statistics I've seen in the back end there. And also ring the bell button so you don't miss that upcoming content from the channel. And then also check out our other content. There are full Zen 6 pictures and specs that have been leaked. Uh, if you missed it, go check out that video now as well. And also check out all the hundreds of bonus videos without ads you can see if you join the Moore's Law is Dead Patreon. Like there's a recent die shrink that ranks GPU performance into tiers that's then also shown on the Moore's Law is Dead website. There is a www.moreslawisdead.com. 
and then explains the reasoning behind the ranking. I think that's a video that a lot of enthusiasts would really enjoy, and there's a new die shrink coming out this week as well, so it's a great time to join. So please consider joining us there. We cannot do this. We cannot be independent without our patrons. And at a minimum, though, if you made it this far into the video, thank you for watching.